Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another paper crafting video tutorial. Today we're going to be creating a couple of balloon shaker cards, replacing the balloon images from the It's Poppin' stamp set from Mama Elephant with the round balloon shaker dies also from Mama Elephant. Let's start today by creating the backgrounds of our cards. I decided to go with a darker, moody, almost win not winter, <laughs> night scene, and I am using Mermaid Lagoon first. I am using my stamp wheel to help hold my four and a half, four and a quarter by five and a half inch background in place. I will be trimming this down a little bit later. I started with the full sheet, but I'll talk when we start to um, assemble our shaker why I chose to trim this down a little bit. And I actually really love it because it's going to give a nice white border to our background that ties into the white outlines and white embossing of our card. Next, we're going to go around the edges of our panel with prize, or pardon me, Uncharted Mariner and we're blending the Uncharted Mariner into Mermaid Lagoon, getting a beautiful blend, just kind of gradually building up that color. I'm a big fan of just gradually building it up, especially when starting from white cardstock. If you wanna start with a light blue cardstock, that does help the blending even more, and that is a great way to achieve this background as well. Finally, we're going to go around the edges with black soot, giving our background a moody, kind of even more night sky type of look. Now, I thought these backgrounds would work great, not only for anybody's birthday, but also maybe even guy birthday. Sometimes that can be a little bit harder to come across and I thought that this might be a great option for that. For example, my oldest son who is a cat lover would love something like these cards. Then I'm gonna go over the whole panel again with Mermaid Lagoon again, blending that black soot, kind of just evening out in all of those colors so we don't have any harsh lines. I am going to do this for both backgrounds, clean up my stamp wheel, and next we're going to take a cloud stencil and white pigment ink and create our cloudy sky background. Now, a couple of things to note about using the cloud stencil and white pigment ink. I am using the Rolling Hills stencil from My Favorite Things, and I am using white pigment ink, applying it with a pouncer from Picket Fence. I like the pouncer. I think it gives a really nice soft look as opposed to the blending brush. You may notice I'm pressing my white pigment ink into my glass surface instead of picking up the pigment ink directly from my ink pad. The reason being is there is some blue, you can see the blue on my pouncer. It's picking up some of the Distress Oxide ink from my background and I do not want to contaminate my ink pad. So press it onto a acrylic block or a glass work surface, something like that, and pick the ink up from there when you are doing something similar. That way you don't ruin your, um, stamp pad and you can clean your blending tool later on. I will be doing this technique again for both backgrounds. Something I talk about a lot lately is the fact that I do often create more than one card at a time. I really feel like if you have the supplies out and you have the uh, ability to do so, it is fantastic to create more than one card at a time as you have the mess out, you might as well have that card finished and on hand. I love having cards on hand for when I need to send them instead of having to make them for each individual recipient. We're gonna work our way up this panel as well. Now, I love the rolling hills because it's very imperfect. It's very much a rolling hill kind of cloud, but any kind of cloud stencil will do, or you could even create your own from a die cut, um, from masking paper or a post-it or something like that. There's a lot of ways to achieve this kind of effect if you don't have this cloud stencil or a cloud stencil. And again, 
cloud stencils. I have tons of different ones and I'm constantly just reaching for whichever one usually that maybe even is out or closest or it doesn't even really matter. I love them all. Now once we have this done, I am going to grab my uh, plastic box and the Juniper Berry Distress Mica Stain. And I wanna mix this up really well. So you wanna shake it till you don't see those mica flakes in the bottom of your bottle at all. And then I want to tap this over the surface of my panels. And I am going to do it, I'm not gonna spray it. When you spray it, you have a lot less control about where your droplets go. And so I like to use a paintbrush sometimes if I don't want fuller coverage, and I definitely don't. We worked pretty hard on these backgrounds. I just want some pretty sparkly, little shimmery, almost stars in my sky. It's gonna go on wet, but you can see pretty quickly as it starts drying how you're left with beautiful, shimmery droplets all over and then I will take my box and paintbrush and rinse those out. So that's just another way to use your Distress Mica Stains. We're gonna set these backgrounds aside to completely air dry. I do prefer to let all of mine air dry if possible. I am going to be stamping and embossing on the on them in a little bit. And so I need the backgrounds to completely be dry before I do so, so that my white embossing powder doesn't stick to any of the ink areas or the mica stain. With a piece of smooth white cardstock, we're going to stamp two images from the It's Poppin' stamp set. I picked two of the images with the cats that don't have a cat on the balloon. So there's three different images. One has a darling cat on the balloon and I did not choose that one this time because we will be replacing the balloon. In fact, I didn't care if it stamped well or not. We're gonna cut it off anyway. But I want to replace the balloon with one of the round balloon shaker dies to make a shaker balloon instead. So we're going to concentrate on coloring the cats. I'm giving them a base color here. I did stamp mine with Hero Arts Intensified Black Ink, which is an alcohol ink friendly ink. And then I'm giving a base of the Warm Gray Zero. I'm using Olo markers today. I have listed the colors I'm using down in the description. And I'm going to go in and draw in some spots. We're gonna do all black and white kitties today. Now, I started with Warm Gray 7. You're going to see me go to Warm Gray 9. I often like to err on the side of lighter is better, um, but I did have to go in and make it an adjustment. So you'll see the progression as we go and kind of what I decide looks the best and so on and so forth. So let's just go ahead and get all of our little spots on our kitties. Then I'm gonna go in with Warm Gray 5 and we're going to color those in. And it's gonna be pretty light. And that base color does give, it does tend to kind of make it, I don't know, fade out a little bit. I don't wanna say bleed because it didn't really bleed outside of the line, but it's not as crisp as I guess I would like it to be. And it's definitely a little too light. I can tell already, I feel like this is just a little too light. But again, if you start light, you can always move to a little bit darker. So we're going to go in, I fixed that one, but we're gonna, Go in now with our warm gray three and warm gray one and add additional shading to the lighter areas of the cat. Even though the cats are black and white, I want to have that shading so that they aren't just the stark white of the cardstock. It's more of an illusion or a trick for your eyes um, than anything. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just not worrying too much about the spots because I know I'm going to need to go over them and fix that. And after the warm gray three, warm gray one is just gonna smooth out those lines where I've added in the shading, mostly around the edges of the cat. I will go in with a red marker and add some pink cheeks and pink insides to the ears on my cats. 
Probably have to adjust a little bit of that here in a minute. And then we're going to grab our darker color. I'm looking at it and I'm like, Neh. I'm gonna go ahead and um, snip my dies apart as I'm contemplating what do I want to do to fix this? This is what I do. Sometimes if I'm not totally loving something, I will work on another part of the project while I kind of think about and come up with a solution. And in this case, it is going to be grabbing that darker marker. I did die cut them first. I can always color them and I will here in a minute. I'm going to tape them in place and again I'm not too worried about the balloons we're going to snip those off okay I've die cut both of my images and I've got my warm gray 9 out and I'm going to go and just very carefully trace around all of my spots and you can instantly see that this is going to help it's going to really give the black and white spot I don't want gray and white spot I wanted a black and white spot and so um, just needed to build up that color a little bit. Now the line is awfully harsh. So this is where we can now go in with warm gray seven and even warm gray five and blend out those spots a little bit more. That just that definition of warm gray nine around the edges helps so, so much. You can really see the difference between the cats on the left that I'm coloring and then the cat on the right, which is the original and what a difference it makes with that little bit of darker marker. So sometimes you just have to keep working at it and working on it until you get the um, coloring the way you like. And that is with any kind of coloring medium that you're using. I love that with Olo or alcohol ink markers of any kind, you're not going to hurt your paper. It's not gonna pill or anything like that with alcohol ink markers. Just make sure that the base color is nice and dry before you go and start adding color on top. You don't wanna oversaturate and cause it the uh, ink to bleed outside of your lines. Okay, once we have the cats fixed all up, the blending, out in those black spotted areas and the pink in the cheeks fixed a little bit, we can work on building the rest of our card, which in this case is we need to figure out where those cats are going to go on the background so that we can die cut our balloon directly from the background. I want the top of the card to be basically flush. Yes, there's going to be some foam adhesive on parts of the sentiments and things, but I want the balloon and image to be flush and the shaker to be underneath this whole panel. That is partly why we are going to need to trim down the panel a little bit so that it fits in an envelope better. I'm using the smallest round balloon shaker die and I'm going to place it and my stamped and colored image on the card so I can gauge exactly where I need to die cut. And I'm going to make sure and use my black jelly roll pen for eyes and noses on my cat so that that can be drying. I've grabbed sentiments from the It's Poppin' as well as Way To Go stamp sets and I've laid them out on my card background so that I know just really getting a, a good idea as far as where everything is going to fit on the card because I need to make sure my balloon isn't hanging off the edge. I need to be able to hide my foam adhesive for the shaker underneath all four sides around the balloon. So that is critical here. Even though on each card, the cats, cat or cats and balloon image are shifted either to the right or the left, depending on which way they're facing. Once I have my balloon in place, we'll remove our stamped image and then run that th the whole panel through our die cutting machine. I did trim down the background before die cutting and I want to retain all of the pieces. The negative space, the balloon frame itself, as well as my background. We will be discarding the frame and replacing it 
replacing it with black glossy cardstock, but as far as placement goes, it's going to be really handy to go ahead and save that. I'm gonna snip the balloon off of the image now, and using some liquid adhesive, we're gonna glue down the balloon string and the cat directly to our card right below where the balloon starts. You're gonna start seeing it come to life, which is always my favorite part. And now I do have another piece of white card stock that is just slightly, I call it a scant four by five and a quarter so that it fits behind the panel perfectly. And then we're gonna replace that circle on that white background piece. That is the back of our shaker. I want it to almost be like the balloon. It's kind of a see-through balloon, I suppose. I, um, You know, one of those balloons that has the confetti in it, but you can kind of see the background. In my mind, this is the story I tell myself. And I didn't really wanna come up with a different color for the inside of the balloon. So I'm going to use my balloon that frame shape and then replace the inside and then I can just pop the frame out and discard that. We don't need it because we will be replacing that with a bl glossy black balloon outline to really make the balloon shape show up. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for our other background. Now the difference between these two cards even though they're very similar, the placement is different on each. The sentiments will slightly be shifted on each. And so that means that I can't really stamp them like one right after another. If you really wanted to mass produce, I would probably use the same image and do several at a time, but this works good. So we're gonna figure out again our placement. We're going to temporarily tape down our balloon die remove our stamped image, and then run that through our die cut machine. Same thing that we just did, and then we can assemble the shaker, or, well, actually, then we can stamp our greeting, assemble our shaker, all of that good stuff. So again, we're gonna use the frame as a guide, and we're going to replace that center piece right inside. We're gonna snip the balloon off of our image and glue this one down in place as well. I'm using the glue press and it just fits right down below our die cut balloon. This also makes it really easy to line up the stenciling of the background with the background of our card before we remove the frame. Okay, once we have both of these, you can see I've got some little pieces of acetate that I'm going to just temporarily adhere back behind the balloon. Because these are small shakers as part of the scene and not a full size card shaker or a huge shaker of any kind, I am just putting a small piece of acetate back behind and then we're replacing the outline of the balloon. I did die cut a couple for each that we're stacking one on top of another to give that frame just a little bit of dimension. I didn't wanna pop it up too terrible much. You could though, if you wanted to make that frame a little bit more uh, prominent, you could uh, stack several of these die cut frames one on top of another. I am placing an acrylic block on top to hold that flat for a little bit. And then on the back of the panel, we are going to frame it up with foam. Now, because the whole panel is popped up, I will need foam all the way around my panel, but it doesn't have to match up like it would if this was a full size shaker frame. It only needs to be right up next to each other where it frames up the balloon. So you're gonna see here on the back exactly how. Now this particular balloon was awfully close to the edge. So my tape is still a little too wide. I'm just gonna cut it in half. I didn't do the best job cutting that in half, but that's okay. And we're going to 
go ahead and place that skinnier piece along there and then right underneath the opening. This will make it so that our foam, our foam, so our shaker material doesn't drop clear down to the bottom and disappear and we don't need as much shaker material saving it for other cards. Now we're going to fill our shaker well with these awesome beads from Pretty Pink Posh. I love these. These were kind of part of their birthday release so I thought they were perfect. I have already removed the foam tape from my card back. I'm replacing that card back just like that and look at our fun confetti filled balloon. Love these beads so much. I think it looks amazing. Let's go ahead and do the other one really quick. Now I really probably should have stamped my greeting before I popped everything up with foam. I have to say though, it didn't even affect this card at all. So that was probably a lucky accident. Same thing for this one, although this one has a little bit wider and I don't have to trim down. It goes up right next to the edge, but I didn't have to trim down my foam, so that's good. And now let's just frame up our opening. as close to the opening as possible. And then we're going to go ahead and fill this well. And you can see I fill it really full. I want it to be really full of the confetti pieces. We're gonna remove the foam, the uh, backing from our foam adhesive, and then pop our backing in place. And just like that, we have two super fun shaker cards. Shaker cards continue to be one of my very favorite things to make. I think they're always impressive. And I do need to add in my round balloon frame now. One on top of another again. Just like so. Okay, now I do want to stamp greetings from It's Poppin' on the background, and then we will stamp and emboss the greetings from Way to Go on a separate piece of paper before adding them to our card and finishing with our embellishments. So the first thing I need to do, again, because these backgrounds are not identical, it will make a bit of a difference where my greetings go on each. So that requires a little bit of trial and error. I like to lay things out, see where they fit the best before I place it in my misty and go for it. So let's remove everything I'm not stamping. We're going to stamp, I hope your birthday is popping right on the background. I am gonna use a little foam. I still haven't refilled my foam, or my foam, my powder tool, uh, I, which I really, really need to do. And we're going to stamp that carefully with embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. Now off camera, I did check my background just by sprinkling some embossing powder on before I stamped anything to see if the embossing powder stuck anywhere. But by this time, my background was completely dry and so I was able to just go straight to the embossing part. If not, you might wanna let it sit and dry for a little bit longer. You can try to heat, heat it up and have it dry faster, but again, I generally do try to just let it air dry for best results. So I've gotta clean my stamp and we're going to see where we want to place it on the other one. On this one, I decided to kind of shift the sentiments a little bit for added fun and flair. I do really love having multiple sentiments on a card. I think it's kind of a, a fun effect. And the sentiments on this really just play into the whole scene. And I think these work together so well. Now, I don't think that was super straight, so this is me fixing it. It's worth taking the extra bit of time if you're not super happy with it to go ahead and adjust. And again, we're just going to put a little powder tool here to help keep that embossing powder only on the stamping. And we'll heat set this one. Next, we're going to take a piece of black cardstock and we are going to stamp. This calls for a celebration and hip hip hooray from the Way To Go stamp set twice. 
and then we will die cut those greetings with the coordinating dies. I want to make sure, especially on black cardstock like this, that I have used a powder tool and made sure to kind of keep that embossing powder as much on these stamped phrases as possible. Now, because these are a thicker font, I personally like to stamp them twice before adding the embossing powder just to kind of help ensure that I get fuller coverage. And then we're going to heat emboss and die cut both of these. I love that there are coordinating dies for this sentiment stamp set as they die cut right up next to the letters and really look fantastic, I think, on all of your card making projects. This is an awesome stamp set. I think you could easily replace the birthday theme for this one with more of a congratulations type of theme or just an everyday theme, depending on your needs, just by swapping out sentiments from both It's Poppin' and the Way to Go stamp sets. You wouldn't even have to grab anything else, but you could always, always dive into your Mama Elephant collection and swap out any sentiments that you like better for your card. Okay, once we have this, now I am gonna make sure that my embossing is all the way cool, and then I'm gonna take a dry rag and we are just going to buff away the powder all over. We wanna get rid of any of that kind of chalkboard effect so that it's nice and crisp and black again before we temporarily tape down our greetings, you can see how close they die cut to the letters and run that through our die cutting machine. Now I'm going to go ahead and do both of these and then we're going to assemble and adhere these to our card. I did choose to use some thin foam adhesive strips today to pop up our greetings on our card design and then we will be adding embellishments as well. And I reuse my post-it tape over and over until it is not sticky anymore. I usually just stick it right to my die cut machine so that it gets lots of uses. So I need to remember which way I want those to go. Those are stacked one on top of another. The thin foam adhesive strips are my favorite for anything skinny, including sentiment strips, but they work great for greetings like this that have lots of little cutouts. So I am going to piece together my greeting or my foam, pardon me, underneath the greeting and then pop it up. And that little bit of dimension adds a ton to this design. As beautiful as these are, remember when I said that we trimmed down the background to four by five and a quarter, which is going to give us a nice white border all the way around when placed on a white card base. When I place these on that card base, to me, it just frames up the whole scene perfectly. It looks absolutely amazing. Love this so much. Now for this one, I am going to kind of shift my greetings around. So I'm feeling like hip hip hooray is the centered sentiment. I hope your birthday is popping is shifted over to the right. And then this calls for celebration will be shifted over just a little bit to the left, but not quite centered with hip hip hooray. I love offset or offsetted offset <laughs> sentiments like that. Off-centered probably is what I was going for. Offset and off-centered together didn't work out very well. <laughs> okay, once we have our greetings, I have a couple of different sizes of silver star confetti from my stash. Both of the ones I'm using are from Pretty Pink Posh, but there are lots of different confettis out there. I like the two different sizes and I felt like stars would really add to my sky. I do generally love to add a heart embellishment somewhere if possible. This time I'm using the Tic Tac Jelly Hearts from Trinity Stamps, a large and a medium, and right underneath the greetings on both cards. 
We'll place our little silver star confetti in these little triangle trays from Simon Says Stamp. They're my favorite. They make it so easy to funnel your embellishments back into your storage containers or Ziploc bags. I'm using the glue press to add those little teeny tiny dabs of glue and the Simon Says Stamp embellishment wand to pick up my stars and put them in place. Now you may see a little glue squish out from underneath my stars in certain places. It will dry completely clear, leaving us with this beautiful sparkly star background. And then the mica stain just kind of adds to that starry feel for both designs. And it'll be really, really cute. Add maybe a couple more. Isn't that so pretty? And of course that shaker, I can't stop shaking it. As I'm working, um, I tend to, after each step, just shake it up. It's fun for all ages. Once we have this, I will be gluing these or attaching these to those white top fold card bases to finish. Because we've left that nice little border all the way around, it's going to make it so these fit inside of our A2 size envelopes a lot easier. When I am creating a shaker panel or a raised panel of any kind, not even a shaker, that has the foam under it, I generally like to not have it go all the way to the edge because it does make it fit in your envelope a lot easier. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these two balloon shaker cards featuring Mama Elephant stamps and dies from the March 2024 release. The supplies I used to create my cards are listed and linked below the vid video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There is exclusive content, information, and behind the scenes content. Top tier members will receive a handmade birthday card during your birthday month, access to DStash, and monthly exclusive lives, plus so much more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new paper crafting video or I go live. Thank you so much for joining and we'll see you next time.